What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and after taking a break for Thanksgiving last week, Apple returns today with the third beta of iOS 14.3 and iPadOS 14.3 for registered developers and soon for public beta testers. Apple also released beta software for the HomePod version 14.3, tvOS 14.3, and watchOS 7.2. But of course, in this video, like we always do, we're gonna cover what's new in iOS and iPadOS 14.3 beta 3. Starting off with the size of this update, you can see here it came in at just 211 megabytes on my iPhone 12 Pro, and the size was pretty small across the board for all devices, but of course it will depend on your device and the version you are coming from. So if you go ahead and check out the build number into settings, general about 14.3, you can see there the build number for beta 3 is 18C5061A. So we do have an A at the end of the build number, which is a good indication we're getting close to the final release. And this should be a pretty stable build given that A at the end there. If we scroll down a little bit to the modem firmware, we do also get a small upgrade here at 1.31.03-5. So before this on beta two, it was 1.31.03-4. So just a minor upgrade there to the modem firmware. So if you were having issues with connectivity, you could see a slight increase in your connectivity on your iPhone 12 or 12 Pro. Now, as far as what's new in this update, you should not be expecting too much given the fact that it's just a 200 megabyte update and it has an A at the end of the build number. That usually indicates that Apple is just focused on fixing up a lot of the bugs that we were facing on previous versions of iOS 14.3 and even 14.2 and 14.2.1 as well because a lot of those bugs carry over in to 14.3 and i've been using ios 14.3 on my main device ever since beta 1 but anyways as far as actual changes and things i've noticed in beta 2 and so far in beta 3 is number one that in siri suggestions right here i've noticed that app clips will start showing up now in siri suggestions and sometimes it will be actually below where it says siri suggestions there will be like another little panel down here that will show like restaurants or games or whatever it may be, it will show like a little pop-up for an app clip to actually use right there. So 14.3 will activate app clips, which of course will let you, you know, install an application or use an application without actually downloading it fully. So if you go over to the app library, you also see down at the bottom, if you go to search, you'll see down at the bottom that we do have a little icon there for app clips. And you can see here, this is where the app clips show up in the app library. They're separated from all the other applications. And you know, if you went to the P's, you would not see this there because it is an app clip. So Apple is really working on app clips and I think that's gonna be a lot bigger You know, the later we go on with iOS 14 and into iOS 15. But that was something I noticed up here in the series suggestions. And if we go into the release notes here from Apple, you can see they did publish the release notes for beta three. And these really never tell too much when it comes to a beta. These are usually used and really tell you a lot of information when it's a final release. But you can see here some things like general resolved in iOS and iPadOS 14.3 beta 3. And it's for iPadOS. So it says beta 3 now supports shared iPad mode. And then also for the business chat in iOS and iPadOS 14.3 beta 3, it says you can now submit list picker and time picker selections as expected. So that must have been a bug before that has now been solved in this update. And you can see some notes about Pro Raw and the thumbnails like in the photos application, some updates to HomeKit, and you can see some new features and changes to the weather application and things like that. So just some minor things listed here in the release notes for beta 3 from Apple. Now, one thing I did notice that's still not been fixed, I've gotten confirmation of this, is that 5G while using an eSIM, you know, while dual SIMming, is still not present in beta three. So this could come in a final release, but if you're hoping to use 5G on both SIM cards, you are not currently able to. Apple did say that this is a feature that's coming, so hopefully we do get that in the final release of iOS 14.3. We should also see Apple Fitness Plus coming out very soon. This could very well be in the final release of iOS 14.3 as well. You can see here it says coming late 2020. Of course, we are in December of 2020, so this is about as late as it gets. So I would not be surprised if we see Apple Fitness Plus come out with the final release of iOS 14.3, and we'll talk about when we can expect that near the end of this video. But this is a very highly anticipated anticipated new service from Apple. And then also I talked about this in my follow-up video for iOS 14.2.1 and 14.3 beta two, but if you have custom app icons, of course you no longer need to use shortcuts anymore. You no longer need to go through shortcuts when you open up the application. So you can see here, I have a custom app icon for YouTube. And when I press on that, it just opens YouTube 
like normal. So it doesn't go to shortcuts and then redirect to YouTube. It opens up right away in that application. And even when you go to the app switch right there, you can see it shows YouTube instead of showing shortcuts or something like that. So that is a new feature in 14.3 and it still works in 14.3 beta three because some people thought it may have been a bug and it's not really how it's supposed to perform. But the fact that it's still there in beta three leads me to believe that this is a new feature and Apple is actually removing the redirection to the shortcuts application, which is great for those who theme your device with custom app icons. Now, as far as bugs go, there have been quite a few bugs in iOS 14.3 beta two, and I've not seen any of these fixed yet in beta three, but of course that will come with time. I will be able to test these more and see if they have been fixed in beta three or not. But since I use this on a daily basis, I have encountered quite a few bugs. So the first thing I encountered is actually inside of Siri suggestions here and just the spotlight search in general. So like if I search for something like Twitter, sometimes I would just simply not be able to press on the app right there. So this has happened to me multiple times and this was actually a bug in previous versions of iOS 14 as well, but it came back in beta two. It has not happened yet in beta three, but it didn't happen all the time in beta two either. So it may still be here, but basically I was not able to click on the application right here. The only way I'd be able to get to it is if I just clicked like search right here, or it would say go and it would take me to that application. But otherwise I would not be able to click on it at all. And it was very annoying. Also the text message notification bug is still not fixed. This happened to me just today on iOS 14.3 beta two. So let me show you exactly what happened. I even wrote that I didn't get the notification in the text message. So I got a haircut today and you can see here, I said, I'm here whenever you're ready at 1138. And she replied, come on in at 1145, but I never saw it. So she asked if I fell asleep at 1154, like a whole nine minutes later. And that's when I said, I never got the notification and I went in there immediately. So that was extremely annoying. I wanted to be early for my haircut so I can get home earlier. And you know, I completely just lost like nine minutes of time just from not getting the notification. So it's extremely annoying. It's still not been fixed. And this happens with text messages more than iMessages, but it still also happens with iMessages. So that is still not fixed in beta two. And I would assume it's not fixed in beta three either, but we'll have to wait and see. I will report back in my follow-up video, which will be coming likely either this weekend or early next week. Now, speaking of messages, the laggy keyboard, when you first open up the messages application and begin to type right away, seems to have been fixed in beta two. However, I thought this was fixed before and it just came back randomly. So I can't say for sure if the laggy keyboard has been fixed or not. And again, it does usually happen inside of the messages application when you first open it up and start typing. So if you guys want to test it out and tell me if it's been fixed or not, let me know in beta three if it's been fixed. And of course I will report back as well if I notice any improvements there or if it comes back. Now, as far as the green tint bug, I have not faced this at all on any of my iPhone 12s, but apparently this is an issue with some iPhone 12s and it does not appear that this is fixed in 14.3 beta three. And I would not expect this to be fixed in 14.3 final either. I would expect this to take a little bit longer. And of course, Apple may address this or it may just be fixed magically in one of these updates like it was last year, but we'll have to wait and see. But I would assume that if you are having that green tent issue, I would assume that it will be fixed via software and that it's not a hardware defect. Now, I did also want to read off this bug that somebody reported to me over on Twitter. So he says, does the update fix junk text being sent to Apple Watch, although hidden on iPhone? My Apple Watch is doing that whenever I receive a junk text message, although the phone detects that it's junk, the Apple Watch doesn't and treats it as a safe text. So basically he's saying he doesn't want to get junk notifications on his Apple Watch, which I wouldn't either. So apparently that's a bug in 14.3 and watchOS 7.2. So I'm not sure if that's been fixed. I never had that issue. I do wear my Apple Watch, but not every single day. So if you guys had this issue, let me know in a comment down below if it's been fixed. Now, as far as the performance goes, aside from those bugs, it's actually been really, really good. And 14.3 beta three feels even better than 14.3 beta two. So going from beta one to beta two felt pretty much exactly the same to me but going to beta 3 feels a lot smoother for some reason so i would assume it's because of that a build number but it definitely feels like a final version right now i mean beta 1 or beta 2 were never bad i really never had any app crashes or anything like that i did have laggy keyboard and sometimes apps would stutter a little bit when i tried to open them but i've not had that at all in 14.3 beta 3 so far and actually if we go into the geekbench you'll see that we actually score a lot higher on this build so take a look up top we got a 1600 single core and a 4071 
multi-core score. So if we compare that to beta two, you could see a pretty nice improvement there in terms of the performance. So that is one thing I'm pretty excited about with 14.3 beta three, because that should carry over to the final version as well. And we should have a nice little performance boost, at least on the iPhone 12s. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life has also been pretty good here on iOS 14.3. Both betas have been fine. And beta three, I would assume is probably gonna be exactly the same as beta two, but I really didn't notice a difference from 14.3 to 14.2 or 14.2.1. I got pretty much the same battery life. You know, I did switch to the Pro Max when it was released, but other than that, I've been using the iPhone 12 Pro here, the 12 mini, the iPhone 12, I've been using them all, and I have a lot of them on 14.3 as well, and I can't really tell a difference at all in the battery life. It still lasts me pretty much all day. I do have to charge it usually once, you know, near the end of the day, and of course when I sleep, but that's pretty much it. So really no complaints when it comes to the battery life on iOS 14.3. But of course the 14.3 beta three improves battery life at all or makes it worse. I will report on that in my follow-up video. Now, as far as connectivity goes, the iPhone 12, any of the iPhone 12s really do not have that great of signal still. So I still have a lot of dead spots where I did not have you know, dead spots with the iPhone 11 series. So I would basically lose signal in certain areas where I wouldn't on the previous iPhones. So that's something I hope gets sorted out. Of course, since we see these modem updates, I would expect this to get better with time, but the cell connectivity is not the greatest on any of the iPhone 12s and especially 5G. 5G, of course, is very hit or miss. It does affect battery life. And I just found myself turning it off completely and just going with LTE. But as far as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, I've had no issues with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Although I do know some people have reported issues with their AirPods randomly disconnecting, but I've been hearing that exact same issue ever since iOS 13. So I don't think that's an issue with 14.3. So now what's next from Apple? So today of course is December 2nd. What can we expect next? So I think that beta four will likely be the RC build or the GM build. Apple's calling it RC now. And I would probably expect that next week. So the only reason we skipped last week is because it was a holiday week. And so I would expect a new beta and it's probably gonna be, like I said, the RC build next week. So the week of the seventh, probably on the ninth, probably just exactly a week, or maybe the eighth, eighth or ninth is probably when we'll see the RC build of 14.3. And if that happens, then we should see iOS 14.3 released to the public on the week of the 14th. So maybe on the 15th or the 16th is when we could see iOS 14.3 released as the final version to the public, which that was one of my earlier predictions for when we'd see this version be released. So that would be cool if it does release on the week of the 14th. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.3 beta three, a nice bug fix and performance boost update here for all iPhones and iPads that support iOS 14. So not a ton of new features, but of course it's always nice to see a boost in the performance and of course fixing up some of those bugs. And hopefully some of the ones I mentioned earlier will be fixing this update as well. And I will let you know in my follow-up video for 14.3 beta three. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss my follow-up video and future iOS beta updates. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.